The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and there is something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh will arise with this generation and condemn it, because at the preaching of Jonah, they repented. And there is something greater than Jonah here. The Gospel of the Lord. So I was reminded of a little mini road trip that I took a few years ago, not to a very far place. I just went to Metairie. Um, but you know, to us who are not used to driving in Metairie, Metairie is New Orleans, okay? And so I was trying to make it to Archbishop Rummel School. And so I ended up getting off of the causeway and took a wrong turn and ended up on the causeway bridge. This was the first time in my whole life that I had ever been on the causeway bridge. When your experience of bridges is the Bay St. Louis Bridge or the Biloxi uh, Ocean Springs Bridge, the causeway bridge is just a little bit intimidating because you get to a point to where you can't even see land. And so uh, I'll never forget that. I was a bit traumatized by that. I eventually made it to Rummel High School. And I made a commitment that day, I will never go anywhere without having a GPS. And so on that day, after I made it home, I went and purchased a GPS. And you know, I was thinking about this in terms of this gospel today. You know, for those of us who are directionally challenged, when we're looking at our GPS, we make a wrong turn. What does it say? It says recalculating, right? It's got to tell you, it's got to figure out, wait, where did he really turn on Oak Street? Or did he really turn on Union? Because I've got to figure out how to get them where they're going. And you know, this is for us a reality of kind of like how Lent is, right? Lent is this opportunity for us to recalculate ourselves and our journey with Jesus Christ, our relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, that's the end goal of everything, that relationship that we have with Jesus. We hear in our first reading of the prophet Jonah who had the courage to go to the Ninevites and to call for prayer, to call for fasting of the people. And the people turned from their sinful ways. You see, brothers and sisters, that's what we're called to do in this season of Lent. To look and see what is it that's holding us back from that relationship with Jesus. Can we name that thing that's holding us back? And I feel, I think I've preached this before, but if we can't name that thing, we can't begin to work on it. And so... The last sentence of the gospel today, really the last line of the gospel today, there is something greater here, actually greater there than Jonah. Y'all, there is something greater here that the world doesn't even really understand, that the world doesn't even know, and that is Jesus Christ. And we brothers and sisters, we as Catholics, we get to receive him every single day. We receive Jesus and he helps us to recalculate our own lives. He helps us to say, wait a minute, Braxton, you made a wrong turn. You gotta take a left instead of a right, or you gotta do a UE so that you get your life back on the straight and narrow. And so the church gives us this season of Lent this season in which we embrace prayer, we embrace fasting and almsgiving to grow in that relationship with the one who we were created to have a relationship, not just now, but for all eternity. 
And so, brothers and sisters, as we prepare to receive him, the one who we're meant for union with, we pray, Lord Jesus, during this Lent, we recognize that prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, they're not necessarily the easiest things. But Lord, help us to embrace him. Even if it's, even if you've, we've had a moment of where we haven't fully embraced either of these pillars of Lent, Lord, help us still now to say yes so that we can reorient our lives to you, Jesus. Because in the end, we know that it's about that relationship with you. It's about growing in love with you. It's about being your disciple. Lord, Father God, we thank you for the great gift of allowing us to have that relationship with you and with your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.